Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. Let's welcome everybody out today to episode 324 of I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name's Chris. And my name's Chrissy. Hey, today we're recording out of our studios at Access Coworking Spaces, right in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City. I love it down here. It's so nice. So Chrissy, I have a question for you. I wanted to bring this up at the very beginning of this podcast episode. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are asking me, what is I Am Salt Lake podcast? And I, I find I have different answers, but the podcast itself does have one major theme. What would you tell people that is? Well, I actually get that question a lot. And whenever people ask me that, my basic answer is we interview cool people doing cool shit in Salt Lake and surrounding areas. Exactly. A lot of times people, especially that are moving here, right? They have this idea in their head what Salt Lake City is. They don't know all these awesome people that are kind of behind the scenes. They don't know how diverse Salt Lake actually is. A lot of times these people that we're bringing on the podcast don't get the chance to share their story. Right. And as you could tell, I mean, this is episode 324, so we have a back catalog of episodes. Absolutely. You can find all those at IamSaltLake.com. You can listen to them right there from the website. All the podcast players, Spotify, everything. Go listen. Find out about the diverse people in this city, people that you wouldn't even expect live here. Yeah. Hey, this episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by Taylor Cooperative, the Salt Lake Barber Company, and Five Wives Vodka. We're going to tell you more about these awesome local businesses and why you should be supporting them. We're going to tell you later on in the podcast. Today on the podcast, we got the opportunity to sit down with Anna, Laura, and Jerry from U.S. Bus Utah Tours. You've seen the big red bus driving around Salt Lake City. Now you get to find out their story. I know you've seen the bus. <laughs> it's the big red bus with the with the back cut off and and I think there's like a, a flag flying from the back there and you're like who's riding around in that? Yeah. I want to ride around in that. I want to find out these cool stuff going on in Utah. We're going to get into that. We're going to find out from Jerry what mm-hmm. made him start it up here in 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 Utah. Utah. And my favorite thing about this interview and a lot of interviews, spoiler alert, is that Jerry is not originally from Salt Lake City. And hearing his story about how he came here and how he fell in love with the city and decided to make this home, that is some of my favorite stuff to hear from people that we talk to. And I think so many of us, including myself, Chrissy, as much as it comes across here in a podcast, I think we take it for granted. We don't realize all this awesome stuff that's in our own backyard. Exactly. Hey, as a special bonus to I Am Salt Lake podcast listeners, listen up. We're going to give you a free audio book from Audible. That's right, a free audiobook along with a free 30-day trial. If you already listen to podcasts, you're going to love audiobooks, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Audible. I know Chrissy's a big fan of them. I, I think lis- I download two a month at least. I don't listen to as many audiobooks as I would like to, mm-hmm. but this is definitely an opportunity that I would take advantage of if I were you listening right now. If you if you just type in your browser, IamSaltLake.com slash book, This is going to forward you to a special portal, giving you a free book from Audible along with a a 30-day trial with them. I mean, you can cancel after it. Keep your free book. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's so many books there. What book are you you listening to right now, Chrissy? Oh, geez. Right now, I actually am kind of jumping around, but I'm reading a book called The Charisma Myth, which is, it's kind of a kind of a self-help book, but it's really good. You should check it out. And you were telling me to check it out. I mean, yeah. and, and a, with this offer to get a free book, I am saltlake.com slash book. Why not take advantage of it? Anyway, take advantage of this. This is special for I am Salt Lake podcast listeners. All that being said, let's jump into that conversation that we had with Anna, Laura and Jerry from US Bus Utah Tours when they came over to our recording studios and shared their story. Enjoy. I want you to kind of, both of you introduce yourselves and tell the listeners what you do for, it's U.S. Bus Utah, right? Is that the, that's, that's correct. That's the name, official name of the company, U.S. Bus Utah. Okay. And so, yeah, introduce yourself. We could start over here with Jerry first. Uh, let the listeners know they have no idea who you are. So, Well, my name is Jerry, last name is Dolej, and I will, for the, to be precise, I will actually spell it D-O-L-E-J-S. 
and uh, I run an own uh, U.S. bus Utah sightseeing tour company in Salt Lake City. And then Anne Laura over here, or Anna Laura, sorry. Yeah, Anna Laura. So I am the sales director for U.S. bus Utah. So uh, when people ask me what I do, my primary job is really to get butts in seats. That's kind of the short version. <laughs> the long version is that a lot of times I end up doing just about everything except for anything that has to do with the buses. So I don't drive the buses. I don't put gas in them. I don't deal with insurance and I don't do accounting and payroll, that kind of thing. But I do anything that has to do with marketing and sales pretty much. Now, Jerry, you started the company, right? Yes, that's correct. I started a company in June 2012. So what is that's that about? That's about six years. We yeah. have a six, season, six seasons behind us. So what, you said June 2012? That's correct. Yes. I started this podcast in August of 2012. So we well, have, we could celebrate together. Well, I could get a bus we, tour. Here we go. I could, you know, we could get all the listeners on one of your double-decker buses. And drive around for the sixth anniversary. <laughs> well, we could do that. It would be actually already seventh anniversary this year, this summer. Oh, right? yeah. Would that be seventh? No, sixth. Twelve. Uh, I think it would be sixth. Or seventh. Well, I don't know. Yeah. This is going to be our seventh season. Okay. Because oh, okay. we operate only in summer. Our buses are open top. So we start May 1st until basically October now, 31st. Now, why is that? That just so you're not driving around in the snow, I guess? Well, it would be a little chilly on the open top bus. So, yeah, okay. it would be a little. How did you come up with the idea for the open top bus? Is that like a unique idea? Well, not unique. In Salt Lake City, it is unique. And uh, uh, if you look uh, if you look on Google, you will find uh, quite few cities around the world that they have a sightseeing tours with open top bus. And for, for listeners, I'm going to put a picture of it, but it's the, it's the big red bus and it says Salt Lake City sightseeing on the side of it, correct? On the that's, side of the bus? That's correct. That was our, actually our first bus. Your first bus. With, uh, we had a two open tow buses, then we got a trolley. Trolley that's, bus San Francisco style because we also do so-called jingle bus. We will talk about it later. And two seasons ago, we acquired a double decker bus again, open top from uh, from England. And, but that one's not running yet, the double decker. It is, it is. It, well, it's not now. It but will it's running. In, in, in May. In May. In May, when you, when you start up the season. Which one of you can answer me this? How did the idea come about? Like, what made you decide to start this, to do this? Because well, there was nothing like it in Utah, right? Before it. Well, no, there's other sightseeing tour companies, but there's no open air buses and actually no other companies that do the hop on, hop off model. Yeah, that's an interesting model. What What is the hop-on, hop-off model? What so the hop-on, hop-off model is, the the concept behind it is just kind of what it sounds like. You get on the bus, you can do the whole 90-minute tour if you want, and then you can go again as many times as you want within the parameters of when we're running for 24 hours from the time that you first get on. And so the idea like the hop-on, hop-off means you can get on and get off and then get back on and get back off. I got you. So like if you're taking a tour and you want to stop at one of the spots, you can you can say hey, you t- I guess you tell the bus driver you want to get off, I guess or, or Oh yes, they, we they- have a full commentary on board and we have a, about 18 different stops and the stops are actually designated around most important uh, things sites in Salt Lake to City. See in Salt Lake City. So people have a choice what they want to see. If you're on the regular tour, you have to go with the tour guide, you have to go in. If you're not interested in that particular place, you wait outside. But our guests, they can create own tour. You are your own tour guide, your own tour director. Interesting. You create your own tour. You can buy one-day ticket or you can buy two-day ticket. And then you can just explore the sections of the, the city that you're interested in? Exactly, because you have a schedule when the next bus comes. Uh-huh. Do you want to stay in the, let's say, Museum of Natural History, which is very extensive? Yeah. You can stay there for 45 minutes, one and a half hour, two hours, three hours, as long as you want. And you always catch the next bus going to the next stop. What, what kind of obstacles have you ran into running a tour bus company i mean is there is there is there obstacles you run into or or problems or i mean i guess just like any business it's like any business i would say that uh, uh, let me go let me go chris a little bit into my personal history i started this i, I was i'm in this business since 1987 
And I start in my life four different companies, one in Toronto, Vancouver, Victoria, BC, and and Salt Lake City, Utah. Tour companies. Tour companies, exactly what we have here. I run in Victoria, Victoria f- between 2007 and 2014. So why did you come to Salt Lake City then? Because I love it here. Well, yeah, but I mean, something, <laughs> How did you discover something Salt Lake? had to draw you Okay, here. well, you won't probably believe me, but... In 2010, I tried to do the same thing in Dominican Republic because my season is always summer and I'm s- sitting idle in, in, uh, in, in winter and I need a cash flow, right? Sure. So I moved down and tried to do, tried to do the same thing in Dominican Republic. I'll be honest, didn't work out. The government and everything is uh, working there differently than I'm used to from Canada, but I met people. From Midvale. Mid- oh, Midvale, you right here. Midvale, Utah, yeah. And I showed them pictures of my bus and they were like, whoa, we don't have that in Salt Lake City. And I said, whoa, why not? Yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. Well, why exactly? Yeah. Why not? And so what I did, I knew it, uh, it uh, the Dominican Republic will not work very well. So I jumped on the first available plane. I came here to... to um, to Salt Lake. To Salt Lake City, met people from Visit Salt Lake. They were very helpful and uh, supportive. And uh, then I came here two or three times for a week to map the city, see, you know, see the situation. And I moved here on the 28th of April, 2012. And six weeks later, I opened the company. Wow. And the rest is history. Is history. Now, for people listening, I don't think we got into, you're actually originally from the Czech Republic. Yes, I was born in Czechos- Czechoslovakia at that time, of course, yes. and I, I, it was a communist country, as, as you know, and I escaped via Egypt uh, to Greece in, two, in 1976, and 1978 I emigrated to Canada, I lived there about 35 years, and then to move, I moved to the United States. And I love it. You know what I love about this, Chrissy, is, is just all the, I mean, you've seen a lot of country. You've seen yeah. a lot of land. I lived in, in South Africa, Greece, uh, Costa Rica. I had a restaurant in Arizona in 1990s. And I've been all, all, all over the world. What's been your, your favorite business so far? Well, Giving tours, I guess? Uh, sightseeing tours, uh, yes. That's, I, can, I, I have to say that. The restaurant business, I call it legal slavery. <laughs> uh, but Restaurant's a hard business. It's a hard business. Uh, yeah. Very competitive. And... Um, but I learned through my life to that service is the most important part of business, uh, what I do, actually, because many people can buy the bus. Mm-hmm. They can buy the equipment, uh, but the competitive edge is in the service. And we try to do the best service we can. And Laura is excellent in her job, uh, you know, keeping the good uh, relationship and liaison with the hotels and hotels are our important, important customers. I must say, I must say, because they send us people. Sure. They get a feedback from the people, and if they're not happy, they won't send us any more people. And, and I was going to ask that, like, who is your biggest customers? Is it tourists? People coming here? I would say. Uh, what do you think? And a lot. I would 90? say yes, but that also that would include in the numbers of people from conventions. Oh, yeah. Convention goers are really big customers for us. And that actually leads to actually one of the biggest challenges we have here in Salt Lake City, specifically with the tour business, is that we rely a lot on on conventions. So one week, the city will be almost empty and there won't be very many people. So then it's hard for us to really get a lot of business. And then the next week, there will be, you know, 100,000 people in the city, maybe from three or four really large conventions, you know, and people are everywhere. And then we have lots and lots of business. Mm-hmm. So it kind of there's this big ebb and flow of it's almost not a lot almost of people one week and then way. the next week there's lots more and then the next week there might be just only a medium of number of people so you know it doesn't stay consistent from week to week as to the numbers of people that are here. Of course, we also service local local people mm-hmm. and uh, interesting observation: we have people from Salt Lake City coming on the tour and the reaction after the tour is 99 percent the same. So many things about my own city I didn't know. Well, we don't know. And that's the thing is we don't know. Like, I live here, right? I've, I've moved to, to, uh, to Utah, gosh, over 20 years ago. And I'm still discovering new things every day. And that's why, like, like I was looking at this tour and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so 
And what's cool, I want to get into all the tours because you do more than just like downtown. You do Antelope Island, right? No? We do Antelope Island tours, but let's get back for a minute yeah. for the for for the locals. And sure. Anna Laura will tell yeah. you about the specials <laughs> yes. we have for local so people. So what we do is we started this last summer to encourage more locals to come on our tour. So we offer buy one, get one free for anybody with a Utah driver's license or the ability to prove that you live here in Utah. And that does mean that both people need to be Utah residents. So you can't oh. grab your friend from Australia and try to get a buy one, get one free. You need to both of both, both people need to be from Utah. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, it could well, be a good date night for someone who wants say. to get to know the city better. Like, there you go, yeah. Chrissy. I'm going to actually take in May. That we're going to, we're going to go on a date. Mm-hmm. And now, how did you get teamed up? With the man so, or... um, you know, I was just looking for a job and I uh, <laughs> stumbled just, across just... it on Craigslist. I was uh, kind of a little bit clueless. I had been unemployed for a whole year and didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do with my life at that point. I was using basically a spray and pray method for job hunting, which sure. I don't really recommend. <laughs> and when did you say it was? How, I just how kind long of ago stumbled was across it? it? This was three years ago. Okay. In the beginning of 2015. So this is going on my fourth season. And and what remind me what you I know you told me you sell tickets and you're you're kind of the, you're you're well running, I was originally a ticket show. seller is what I originally was and then I got promoted last summer to sales director. Well, there you go. So you probably you just found more creative ways to kind of get the brand out there and exactly talk about things. more creative ways to help promote the business, help us get more people. Yeah. Um. Oh, I thought you were going to say something I, there. We can cut was, this out too. Sorry. Let's cut no. that out. Well, <laughs> Actually, um, when it comes to locals, too, the other thing, too, that we are becoming more and more known for, we've done a little bit of this all along, but it's becoming a bigger part of our business. Like we've kind of said tours are our bread and butter of our business, but we also offer charter services. So things like weddings, birthday parties, bar hops. Yeah. So for example, we did a downtown bar hop last year with a group in the double decker. We took them around to, I think about four or five different bars and they did a mini tour where we drove around the state Capitol building and some of the downtown sites just so that they could see a little bit of downtown. And that was a blast. They loved it. So somebody can come, like, do they just call you up or email and say, hey, I want to do a, do a bar hop or, or mm-hmm. something and then rent you for the evening? Or- Actually, with the covered trolley, which is usable year-round, I had a charter last Saturday. Really? South Salt Lake had a, what is the name, art crawl. Yeah. So I was mm-hmm. shuffling, shuffling people around, five or six different uh, studios, and uh, and uh, the brewery was involved, uh, uh, Shade of Shades, Shades of Pale. Pales, yes. Shades of Pale. Yes. We should do this for I Am Salt Lake podcast listeners. We should we should rent a, the bus and then mm-hmm. do a do a like a bar crawl. And we do we do of course weddings. We have several weddings on our on on the trolley. Actually, some a couple took pictures in the trolley. Really. And the lady photographer won some kind of prize because it was so unusual. Just to understand, the interior of the trolley is nice old uh, oak wood. Uh-huh. It's beautiful. I saw it online. It's it online? gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. How many people can fit in inside the trolley? Uh, inside the trolley, what is it? I don't know, about, about 25. 25, 25 25, 27 people. Yeah. Believe me, when we do Jingle Bus and we have a bunch of kids, uh, one day I count uh, the people, how many I got. It was about 78. Okay. It was like a subway in I Tokyo. I think I saw the Jingle Bus one year. Do you guys you put uh, lights around it? Lots and, of blue lights. Yeah, and yeah. We run exactly six years. Uh, and it's we, set up to like just downtown. And it's free. It's if only, I'm not, it's uh, free. It's downtown. Uh, just very very simple very simple route between Gateway and City Creek. And if you if you drove any time be- before Christmas this route, it's hell. It goes like a half an hour. Of, Two blocks. So mm-hmm. what people do, they just park at a gateway, they jump on the free trolley, and they go see the lights. And you can see the lights and then do the shopping and at City Creek. City and, Creek and, shopping. And then you don't have to worry about parking. Parking, driving, uh, yeah. uh, et cetera. So that was, also, that was actually that's a, actually a project of uh, Downtown Alliance. And uh, it started 2012 in our first year. And it was also a very interesting story. I didn't have a trolley that time. I had only two open top buses. And uh, Jason Mattis, with the CEO of uh, Downtown Alliance, he approached me. He said, well, we have a dream. Mm-hmm. We have a dream for eight years to have a jingle bus. And I said, what is jingle bus? So they explained me. And I said, okay, you have a dream. I have a trolley. So I flew to Victoria, to my old company. I took the trolley, which I had over there. Drove 1,000 miles down to Salt Lake City, 
and we started the first jingle bus. So wait, you drove the trolley here? Huh? All the way from, yeah. wow. Well, in March, I had to bring it, of course, back because they needed a trolley for the summer. Oh, no, wow. And I did it two years. <laughs> so does it, do you do, do continue to go back and forth? No, no. Well, I quit that, okay? It's yeah, <laughs> a lot mind. of driving. How many, how many like, hours is that? Well, 17 hours. 17 hours? It's about 1,100 miles. So, but what's happened is that uh, in 2014, I might say I fall in love with Utah and I sold a company in, in Victoria. Okay. okay. Which brought a one problem. I didn't have a trolley. So we were frantically searching for a trolley. We find one in California. We bought it from California, brought it here, drove it from Chico, and and again, voila! And here there's voila. the new jingle here bus. Here we go, new jingle <laughs> bus. Exactly. This one is actually CNG, which is better. It's natural gas, so it's uh, oh, it's more it runs on natural friendly. gas. That's fantastic. We need to actually take a quick break. We have to play a couple messages here from our sponsors, and then when we come back. We have some more messages or we have some more questions to ask you guys when we come back. Uh, So hang tight. We'll be right back. All right, Chrissy, it's that time of the podcast where we take a few minutes of your time, tell you about our awesome sponsors. These are some great local businesses that are helping keep this podcast going. So I cannot urge you enough to go out and support them because when you support them, you're supporting the podcast. Hey, we have a brand new sponsor for the podcast. I'm really, really excited about this. Taylor Cooperative, right in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City. Taylor Cooperative makes suits that actually fit. Not those bulky suits that you get from suit shops in the mall. You guys know who I'm talking about. These are suits that are custom fitted to fit you. Guys, <clears throat> we all need a suit here. Whether it's it's for work, a wedding, or just a night on the town, this is where Taylor Cooperative comes into play. Head on over to their website, taylorcooperative.com. Schedule a fitting. They're going to get you fitted and set up with a suit that you are actually happy with. You're never going to want to take it off. Trust me on this one. I know a lot of you have never gotten fitted for a suit. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. It's really a simple, easy process. They have an amazing fabric selection, which they let you look through. They'll talk to you about your personal style, and then they take your measurements. I actually was, I actually got fitted the other day. It's a fun, informative, very relaxed environment. They didn't make fun of the dad bod. They, they took good care of me. It was, it was a lot of fun. And the end result is a high quality suit made specifically to your measurements and style preferences. The first step, of course, is to schedule a fitting. Head on over to their website, taylorcooperative.com. And when you go in, tell them thank you for sponsoring I Am Salt Lake podcast. Hey, this episode of the podcast is also sponsored by the Salt Lake Barber Company. So after you get a suit, you're going to want to get a nice haircut. Their address is 10 East, 800 South, right on the corner of 8th and Main, right in the Central 9th District in downtown Salt Lake City. They offer haircuts, beard trim, straight razor shaves, and full disclosure, this is where I go to get my haircuts and beard trims. And you guys know I look good, so Salt Lake Barber Company does a bang-up job, an amazing job with their haircuts and beard trims. They're a true community barbershop. They are focused on providing the best work environment possible and allowing barbers to always provide the highest quality experience while in the chair. Let me tell you how this works. So a lot of times when I first started going to barbers, I just, you know, you'd walk in, right? You're mm-hmm. like, oh, I want a haircut, right? You'd go to the, you know, the, the, the chain haircut places and you would just get a haircut. Well, Salt Lake Barber Company works a little bit different. They, they, you can get a guaranteed appointment. Go on to saltlakebarberco.com is where you can book an appointment. They do take walk-ins if they're available, but go to their website. I'm telling you right now, you, this is the way to do it. Like I got an appointment tomorrow morning at 930. I know going in, I'm going to get my haircut at 930. You, it's nice to know. You're yeah. just going to go, you're going to get done, and you're going to leave And Isaac's going to do it. I'm not going to sit yeah. there for two hours and wait for a haircut. Yeah, and hope you get whoever's chair is open next. <laughs> exactly. SaltLakeBarberCo.com is their website. Cuts, shaves, good vibes. They support local 
And I mean, this is a really cool barbershop to check out. Again, their address is 10 East, 800 South, right on the corner of 8th and Main, saltlakebarberco.com is their website. Many thanks to Salt Lake Barber Company for sponsoring I Am Salt Lake Podcast. All right, this episode of the podcast is also sponsored by the very awesome, very delicious Five Wives Vodka. If you haven't tried this delicious local vodka out yet, A, you're missing out, and B, you're probably living under a rock. Uh, They have three different flavors for you to try out. They have the original Five Wives Vodka. This is what I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, and a lot of you might be drinking if you're drinking it. It's made from Utah Mountain Spring Water. It's 100% distilled corn spirit. And it's gluten-free. Spring is hidden up in beautiful Ogden Canyon. It's inaccessible by vehicle. So they're actually hiking out this water five gallons at a time, which is is mind-blowing and impressive. They have a, a Five Wives Sinful, which I want Chrissy to tell us a little bit about. Ooh, yes. The Five Wives Sinful is a flavored vodka with a delicious cinnamon taste. It's not like other cinnamon products that give you that cinnamon candy taste. Sinful is like a morning cinnamon roll, and it's only 76 calories per ounce. It actually is good in the morning time, too. Uh, maybe in a little coffee. I don't know. It's a great way. <laughs> and then they have the Five Wives Heavenly, which is a flavored vodka with a delicious vanilla taste. Heavenly's rich, buttery vanilla flavor comes through without coating the taste buds with sugar, and this results in more vanilla and less calories. And that might be good in top coffee, too. Never know unless you try, right, guys? Hey, so all three of these flavors can be found at your local state liquor store, the local DABC. So wherever you go to get your booze, pick up a bottle of Five Wise Vodka. Because if you're in Utah, you're going to drink Five Wise Vodka, right? If you're in another state, you might drink another vodka. But if you're here, you're going to drink Five Wise Vodka. Anyways, their website is fivewisevodka.com. So we can find out more information about them, recipes, and all that good stuff. And uh, many thanks to uh, Five Wise Vodka for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. So, Anna Laura, uh-huh. what is it? Uh, before we started recording, you were mentioning some of the hotels that you're working with around, <laughs> around Salt Lake City. What is it that you're doing with these hotels? What uh, you want to talk about that for a little yeah, bit? Yeah. So we, yeah. So I work with two different kinds sets of people. Hotels. We work with the front staff, and we talk to them about our tours. We invite them to come on our tours. We incentivize them actually with a little commission to you know get them to talk about our tours and refer people to us. And it's primarily the downtown hotels. We have worked some with the airport hotels, some of the other hotels outside of downtown, but that makes up maybe 5 to 10% of our referral business. 90 to 95% of it's the downtown hotels. It's just, you know, the closer people are to downtown, the more likely they are to actually show up on a tour. That right. is just kind of how things work. And then we also work with the sales directors and the event planners and some of the other people that are there at the hotels that are working with the big group. So that is actually another way that we get some of our charters, our special events, that kind of thing. Or oh, go ahead. How do you, how do you guys pick where to go? What locations you decide to actually take people to? Well, we actually have a standard 19 mile hour and a half tour that is the hop on hop off tour. Okay. So that is a standard tour that is offered between six and seven times every day. And we don't detour off the route from that tour for our daytime tours, for our hop-on, hop-off. Now, if somebody wants a special tour, so that would be things like our Antelope Island, a charter. Like mm-hmm. somebody can charter the bus and say, oh, well, there's this certain spot in Salt Lake City that I want to go, and this spot isn't on the tour, then we could take them to that location. But as far as the regular hop-on, hop-off tour goes, we have that already mapped out. And if you look at the map, it includes pretty much, like Jerry had mentioned earlier, the places that are the most frequently visited and the most frequently well-known in Salt Lake City. So things like, this is the place, State Park, Mm -hmm. where Brigham Young drove through and said, this is the right place, drive on, and it's got, you know, the whole Heritage Park and... Then we go through the University of Utah campus through quite a bit of that and through Research Park and talk about a lot of the contributions that the University of Utah has made to science and medicine and some of the things that it's known for. We go to this is we go to the Natural History Museum in Red Butte. We drive by the Fine Arts Museum up at the university. We drive, of course, do the loop around Temple Square and talk about that in the conference center. And we go up to the state capitol building. And, you know, there are other sites as well, but it's, you know, it's the main 
things in Salt Lake City that Salt Lake City is known for. Sure. Mm-hmm. And the, th- the thing is, is no matter what you're into, I mean, anybody can find something like that interesting. Right. No mm-hmm. matter what your religion is, mm-hmm. no matter what your history is. I mean, I find it fascinating. I love to go up to like, this is the place monument and stuff oh, up there yeah. to find out the history of Salt Lake City. Cause I mean, this is where we live, especially. So when I, let's go a little bit back here and get your get history it, again. Yeah. So when I came here, I, that was my first time in Salt Lake City mm-hmm. in my life. And I met people from Visit Salt Lake and mm-hmm. Eric Thompson is the marketing, uh, marketing director. And Salt Lake uh, has a product named uh, Connect Pass. You can buy a card as a tourist and you can go within, a, it's a for one day or two days, depends on the price. And you can go to different places as once and you can go one place, two place, three place, as much time you have in that day. So our tour was created to copy that oh, okay. route and to get people who bought this Connect Pass on the tour and they can use it. Right on. Okay. So that was actually the beginning of the tour of the route, riding the route. So I just map it out and then we printed the map and, uh, and start uh, 15th of June. Talk about the Antelope Island. I'm intrigued by this because I'm going to admit it on the podcast how I've never been to Antelope Island. Okay. And we've, well, I think we, I admitted we've, we've it before about it. We because we it had, one time. we had a photographer, Rob, uh, on the podcast. And, I think a lot of yeah. uh, Utahns don't actually get the chance to go out there. So, Talk about what, what, what is the tour at Antelope Island? Is it cool? Um, it is, it is, it is really cool. And it also gives people the chance to experience the Great Salt Lake. And the thing that I found just really extremely funny and almost even a little ironic is the number of tourists that feel like visiting the Great Salt Lake is a can't miss thing that they absolutely must see it when they come to Salt Lake City. Well, of course. I mean, that's, <laughs> and it's our, like, that's our, that's uh, our, that's our spot, man. It's a big, it's a, a big stink. old stinky lake with dead fish. Do you really want to see it? Well, they have but, to, they have to say, to their friends, I stuck my foot in the, in in the, the Great Salt Lake. lake. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to. I mean, you, you have to. And then the other thing that I find ironic, too, is the number of tourists that come and expect to be able to walk there from downtown Salt Lake City. Oh, They're, really? They, yeah, they come here and they don't realize that the that Great is Salt so Lake is not in downtown. <laughs> so you have <laughs> It to is true, though. When, when Nikki and John came out here from New Zealand, we have some, some avid listeners from New Zealand, which I want to get them on this tour uh, with you guys. But when, I, when they came out to Salt Lake City and, and if I remember correctly, sorry, Nikki and John, if you're listening, and, and I completely am butchering this, but but uh, you guys thought the Great Salt Lake was closed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, how would you know? I mean, <laughs> you know. Well, the tour, we actually we actually have a, one of our drivers named George. He goes and takes people to the island for about, what, 15, 17 years. Mm-hmm. He knows every stone on that island, all the really? history. And, uh, uh, well, we have a more than seven people. We take the bigger vehicle and we have also van that's his and he works for us as a subcontractor, takes people in the smaller vans to the island. And it's very interesting place, the, the wild bird refuge and life. It's amazing. We, we, There's a lot of wildlife we there, We got to go out there. Well, yeah. and there's, can of course, see the antelope, antelope, too, just yeah. like Antelope Island. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. The, the, from yeah. Deer of course, and the bisons, the bisons bison and... are the major uh, animals. I, I'm, I'm a, attractions on the, on the island for tourists. I'm embarrassed to say <laughs> that I've never. Now, where can let's talk about getting tickets, right? So, people listening right now, they want to take a tour. How do they get tickets? So, there's a couple different ways they get tickets. One way is that they can buy a ticket online, and this comes to another promotion that we have. If somebody buys a two day pass online, then they automatically get a third day for free. Okay. So, if somebody's going to be staying in Salt Lake City for more than two or three days, and they want to have that option. And I might also add that the other thing that is a distinctive feature of our tours is that we don't require that to be two and three days in a row. So somebody can go, say, like on Monday, and then they have a convention on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, then they can come back and go on Friday and Saturday. And there's, I mean, they, they, they could choose different tours they can to go on. Different right? days. Well, it's all the same it's tour. It's all the same tour. It's all the same tour. The Salt Lake City Hop On, Hop Off Tour. Okay. Yeah, it's Did all you the same request tour. a special a special tour to do like the Antelope Island. Yeah, so, so that's kind of, like that's Jerry was just explaining. Yeah, that is it can be a charter. Our driver actually goes out there at least a couple times a week, so we will work with him to collect groups. And if it's a smaller group, he uses his van. If it's a bigger group, we take our trolley. Or a couple of times, we have even been out there in the double decker. 
And we do those only in the evening because that's the way it's when it's cooler, the animals come out, mm-hmm. and people are able to see the sunset out there. Oh, um, yeah. Some other tour companies try to take people out in the middle of the day, and it's too hot and stinky, and the animals hide from the heat. And so. And especially in the open bus, yeah. you know, you don't want to get sunburnt. And, like, well, but even in our vans, our driver, yeah. George, that we work with, he won't take people in the middle of the day. People request to go at 1 p.m., and he refuses to do it because he does, he'll just get bad reviews. Mm-hmm. Because people just don't want to go. They, don't, they think they want to go then, but they really don't. That it's one sense. of those things yeah. where we have to try to convince them that yeah. they, they have don't a way want better what they time. think that they want. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't know. It. Of course, they don't know what what's the best time. And, uh, of course, the sunset uh, from my deal of island is, uh, is better than in Hollywood, believe me. Oh, it's awesome. We have some pictures on our website <laughs> yeah. of it. What's the we website show? that people can go to to check it out? So our, our website is usbusutah.com. Okay, awesome. So we what, also react very quick. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I'm no, sorry. no go ahead. We, we also react very quickly. Example, Sunday night, about 9 o'clock, got a phone call from Chicago. We are coming to to Salt Lake City on a night flight. We would like to go Monday to Antelope Island. Gave them George's number. They came back about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. George called me. He got them, picked them up, and they were in Sandy in a hotel down in Sunday, and they wanted to see Antelope Island. That's that's the way you work it. That's, that's the way quickly, quick reaction and accommodation of the mm-hmm. of the of the guest for the. So, guest. can someone request you say so they're staying in Sandy? Would he actually drive down and pick them up from Sandy? And he then did, take he did that. He oh did wow. That. That's wow, amazing. You guys it, go go the extra mile. Well, we we <laughs> can, but it also does depend on how many people and the circumstances behind it. If it's just mm-hmm. like one or two people, then you know, I mean, he can, but there's yeah. going to be some extra costs involved. Right, it has on to be where reasonable. They're have to be, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What kind of feedback do you get from people? Because especially, I'm sure you deal with a lot of people that have never been to Salt Lake City, right? Like. Do they do they give any feedback like wow this city is amazing I didn't expect it to be so cool They do they do and actually back to also the ticket sales so I, we was mentioning that online is the number is one place they can buy them they also can buy them directly on the bus when the bus is running around the driver okay. or tour guide will sell them and then we also have a booth outside the Salt Palace from about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. during the day when we're running. Okay. And people can also buy tickets there at the Salt Palace booth as well. Currently. So if you're in Salt Lake and bored and you just want to go do something, find your booth. Yeah, yeah or, find or find a bus. Or find a bus. Call us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we are the only only double decker bus in 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 town, so it's not uh, well, not, not so difficult to, to miss well, it's it. difficult to miss us. Yeah. And the general reaction uh, uh, from the people. On our tour, I drive usually in summer on the weekends, so I, so I don't get home sitting idle and bored, so I drive the bus, and the reaction is always the same. Wow. It's yeah. safe, it's clean, it's beautiful, and it's full of history. We love it here. Yeah. That's the general reaction of of everybody who who visits our city. Have you ever heard anybody like after a tour be like, I got to move here? I got to live here? Oh, many times. Oh, really. yeah, Many, we do. many yeah. times. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> And we encourage them, believe me. Yeah. But we don't want too many people. It's our <laughs> no, special place. No, no. We got to <laughs> open it up. We've even had people come on our tours who already had the intent to move here. And they were taking the tours and driving around taking pictures of real estate, trying to find a yeah. place to buy to come move here. <laughs> Actually, I, I, we had a couple a couple charters for a company named Dave's Work. Maybe you heard about him. It's a computer company. And okay. they are... And 400 South. And, I think it's Workday, work actually, Thank is you. what it That's is. Right. Oh, you okay, yeah. 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 The when they actually. start three years ago, when they when they started a the company here, they have now three or four floors in that uh, high-rise. They hired us to just show the new employees the city. That's a good that's, idea for new businesses if they want to, you know, show idea. their new employees that they're mm-hmm. moving their business here. Now, did you grow up here, Anna? Laura? I did. I'm a yeah. Salt Lake City lifer, so, so we, I'm we originally didn't really from get here into that. I know we grew up here, so yeah, absolutely. New companies that want to show off the city, and I'm actually working on a new promotion on that as well, so they can get in touch with us if anybody's listening to this and they're working for a company that is hiring a lot of people and bringing them and moving them to Salt Lake. They can contact me, and I can get them some details about our new promotion where they can gift their new employees with a tour and have them what, say here, welcome to Salt Lake City. Now you can go on a tour. Cause this, I mean, we're more and more people are moving here like all the time. Businesses are coming here. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot of growth here, both of you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Since yeah. you've, since you've lived here. Now let's kind of shift it gears just a little bit here. I always like to find out 
where people like say you had a friend that's never been to Salt Lake, right? I asked this on the podcast. I'll say, where would you recommend to check out? Now I'm sure there's places you would recommend that the buses don't go to, right? Or oh, or, sure. I mean, what what I are mean, some things there's... things that you're like? Yes, you have to check this out. Or maybe it's part of the bus tour. I don't know. It could be part of the bus tour. What what are some things that are must? checkouts in the city you know that sugar house is a very special place you know uh, yeah special district of the city we don't go there because it's a little bit too far we we hit uh, both uh, shopping malls gateway which actually is now changing to dif- something different and of course uh, city creek we go around around city creek which are both beautiful spots to check out too if oh you've absolutely never been here. yeah absolutely. and all the new um things that they're doing to the gateway if you haven't been here in a while and you want to go back, it's so much fun to see all the cool things that they're putting mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, they are changing from more uh, for from a retail place, more entertainment, mm-hmm. restaurants. Uh, Dave and Buster's are putting in a Dave and yep, Buster's down exactly. there, which I'm excited for. Well, I you know, and I would say actually a couple of things come to mind. The first thing that comes to mind is our state capitol building. Yeah. Some state capitol buildings are not that great. Ours is actually really beautiful with a lot of history. There's a lot of artifacts paintings, works of art, things like that inside our state capitol building. So I would say they should go check out the state capitol building and you walk around on the grounds and it's a really great way to look down below and see the valley and the city from up at the state capitol as well. So you can get some really beautiful scenery from up there. So I would say check that out. And the other thing too is what they call the living room hike up above Red Butte Garden. It's a great so you can hike, hike yeah. up there and go check out and see the city and just be amazed by what the new place is that you've just moved yourself to. <laughs> I'd be like, what did I move my, this is beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's so many things to, to do here. For example, uh, Heritage Park started three, two years or three years ago. They have a horseback riding. They have a cowboy from Arizona, a real cowboy, and they have like 10 horses. You can go with a guide through the mountains on the horseback. Beautiful view. Huh. You can go for hours. You can feel half like you're in the hour. Old West. Exactly. <laughs> And it's it's very popular now. It's getting very popular. They are very busy. And of course, we pass by with the bus. We pass by the stables. So, so could you stop at the bus and then take the horses? And they then could get back theoretically, they could. They could hop off, go for an hour ride through the through the through the mountains, and come back and continue on the tour. I love it. Is there a place that you would like to add to the tour that you're thinking? Are you thinking of expanding and adding location? You know, spots. Um, maybe, maybe well, it's a top secret. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess that's way. a top secret. It's a, I don't think it's really a top secret. I, I would surprise me that we add spots to our current tour. I think our current tour is pretty good as it is, as far mm-hmm. as, you know, just your classic, basic, historical, cultural tour of Salt Lake City. But in two words, I'll give you a hint of what is hopefully going to be coming this coming fall in terms of some additional tours that we're going to run with our trolley and hopefully run them year round. Chocolate and food. Ooh, Ooh, I like it. I like both those things. I do too. Chocolate and food. Well, speaking of chocolate and food, I always ask this favorite local eating spots. Do you have any favorite? I don't know which one you want to go. Jerry, I'm sure you got a bunch of places. It's so many. So many. I like Cajun food probably because I had a Cajun restaurant in, in Phoenix, Arizona. So what, what, what's good Cajun around here for people? Not, uh, one is a bayou on state street. That's interesting place. I, I'm not sure if you know, they have over 400 different beers. Yes. I've heard that. They have a Good beer selection and and really best good food. in Utah actually over four hundred different brands of beer. Have you tried all of them yet? Not yet, but I'm working on it. All well, right, I drive, you know, so I cannot. <laughs> I cannot you can only try one at a much, time. Yeah. yeah, and I would have to say my favorite place is a place that's a little different. Some people, you know, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I really like Zest. Oh, I love mm. Zest, and it's actually just right around the corner from where we're recording here yeah. today. I love. I mean, I yeah, Zest. Whew. <laughs> I never thought I would really love to go to like a vegan gluten-free restaurant until I found Zest. Well, and I actually have to be gluten-free and I'm allergic to milk. So to me, I'm a little bit limited by what I can eat. So I like going to Zest. That's one of the reasons I like Zest is because even though I'm not vegan, yeah. I can eat everything on the menu and I don't have to worry about what's in it. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know that. I actually, I don't eat gluten myself. So I, it's, it's always good to find somebody else who, who eats the same way that I do. And there's actually a lot of places in the city that uh, help. It's very accommodating yeah. to different types of dietary restrictions. 
Let's run down the list as we kind of wrap this uh, episode up. I've had a good time finding out about about your bus tours and about what you're offering here in Salt Lake City. Let's rerun down the website and and you know your season on and how people can can get a hold of you guys and, and whatnot. So I don't know which one of you wants to uh, share that information. Okay, so I can share it. So our current season, as we've explained, with our open air double decker buses and then you know you'll sometimes find the trolley running during that season as well this year for 2018 we start running on monday april 30th and we run through it, it kind of depends sometimes the tour season ends a little bit earlier in october but we do have there are quite a few really large conventions coming towards the end of october this year so this year we will likely be running till at least about october 22nd or so just depending on the crowd volumes is when mm-hmm. we run our hop on hop off so generally may through october and then we have our charters with our trolley that's available year round and then once we get our food and chocolate tours that we're planning to hopefully launch soon running then we'll hopefully be running those year round as well and then uh the website did you mention that our yet? website is usbusutah.com and, and you spell out the utah so usbusutah.com and i'll put that at iamsaltlake.com with this episode so if somebody's driving right now listening to this or running we don't want to you know interrupt that head on over to iamsaltlake.com and you're on facebook as well we right? are under facebook.com slash usbusutah and I'll put that link as well. Any other social media that you're on? We're also on Twitter, twitter.com slash usbusutah. We haven't used it as much, but sure. we probably will. What about maybe Instagram? React. People love We are pictures, on Instagram, yeah. and uh, our Instagram handle, we we had usbusutah, and then the password got lost, and we couldn't uh, get back in. Oh, no. So we're actually, our updated one is actually at usbusutah tours. Okay, okay. On and Instagram. I, and I'll put those links. Anything else you want to add, either one of you, before well, we. The- the prices are the current prices are on our website. People can use cash. Everybody loves loves cash and major credit cards. Well, I've had a heck of a chat. Anything you want to ask him, Chrissy, before we let him go? What's one piece of advice that you would leave with our with, listeners? With our listeners, Ooh, just a piece of life advice. Well, come on our tour and see what Salt Lake City is really about. Hey, I like that. Actually, mm-hmm. that's a good place to end the the podcast. It is. So, thank you so much. Check you guys out. Mention that you heard them on I Am Salt Lake. And I always tell people, let's catch up down the road. So uh, as we were wrapping this up, I completely spaced to ask you, Jerry, about Moab. So before we started recording this, you were telling me, and then my mind went blank. I My apologies. Moab. Talk about Moab, Utah, what you're well, doing Well, I'll there. make the long story short this time. Um, um, I already registered two companies in down in Moab. And uh, we will run an airport shuttle and a city shuttle. And that's also briefly very interesting history. I found out that Moab as a town with 1.25 million visitors a year does not have city bus. Really? No. And it's a great place to visit. It's a great place to visit, but no city bus. And that's a problem. And I don't see usually a problem. If I see problem, it's more like opportunity. So talk the air. The, so there's an airport at Moab. Then well, I, airport is closed now. And imagine it was a little little planes up to ten people could land in in uh, uh, and the, uh, at this airport, which is 16 miles away from town. Now they shut it down on the first of January. They making a new runway, new terminal. Uh first of May, uh, SkyWest will fly from Denver two hours a day to Moab Airport. Wow. And they will have a TSA services, which is very important. Mm-hmm. Meaning if you go to New York City, you can check your luggage in Moab. You don't have to go in Denver and check it again through TSA, through the X-ray and everything. It's all done or it will be done over there. And again, 16 miles away, planes up to 50 people in one shot landing, no airport shuttle. So when is this opening up? You're, it's not open yet in Moab. Or... It's about five weeks. It oh, so, so, yeah. so almost the same time as here in Salt Lake City. That's correct, yeah. Uh, so U.S. Bus Utah will be run by my, uh, my Anna Laura and George. They are with me long, the longest time, and they know the operation, and I'm going to be in between, between Moab and the Salt Lake City. Where can people find more information about Moab? Is it the same website? or uh, Not yet, but if they go on, I believe is. Uh, Visit Moab.com, the Travel Council, Moab Travel Council, they have own website, okay. which is very well run. They have a 2 million hits a year, 
and uh, you can find all the information about the city shuttle, the airport shuttle, and now we're working with the National Park Service to bring people to inside the park. Because maybe you heard there's lots of problems with crowding, mm-hmm. with parking uh, in the uh, in arches. So we're working with them and and to get the buses in, instead of uh, so having fifty, 50 cars, arches. fifty cars, you have yeah. a one bus with fifty people. I love it. Anything else you want to mention about Moab? Well, and, that's yeah. basically it's in it's in brewing. I would say it's in in process uh, being uh, happen. And so if you're going to go down to Moab, it's, check it's it out happening. next time. Next yeah. time we go down to Moab, Chris, yeah, we'll have to go see the arches on the bus. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, amazing place and it's a different culture. I saw the Salt Lake City is the best place and friendliest place in the world. I would say now they compete with Moab down there because it's a really nice community and, you know, dedicated to service. Well, I'm glad. Um, thank you for, for mentioning that, Jerry. It's 1.6 million people going to Arches a year. Wow. Well, thank you so much, both of you. Okay, well, we yeah, thank sure. you for, for the platform to to speak. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Many thanks again to Anna, Laura, and Jerry for coming on this episode and sharing a little bit of their story and how U.S. Bus Utah tours started here in Salt Lake City. What a great story. Yeah. I especially like the trolley story. You know what? I say this a lot, Chrissy, but I would love to do something like this with all the listeners of I Am Salt Lake. Yeah. Let let us know. I mean... If you would want to do a trolley bus get-together. Why not? Let's all take hop on the U.S. bus tours yeah. and have Jerry take us around. Uh, maybe take us out to Antelope Island. I don't know. That could be really fun. Post it up in our uh, I Am Salt Lake community on Facebook. Let us know if you want to want to do something like this. All of the links to connect with, with U.S. bus Utah tours, they're going to be on the on the show notes and all the links at IamSaltLake.com slash 324 That's a good link if you want to share this episode, like with your family and friends on Facebook. Don't let this podcast be like your dirty little secret. Yeah, don't keep it to yourself. You know, I mean, I know we all listen to a lot of podcasts and our friends Uh are probably getting annoyed and probably (laughs) sick of... uh, You're that person at the office. I just heard this podcast. Hey, and and, you know, I don't know if I've ever said this before. And if I haven't, I want to say this now. If you if you post on Twitter, say hey, check out I am Salt Lake podcast, and you you tag us on Twitter, I will retweet that. We have like twenty eight thousand yeah. followers on Twitter. I mean, that's a good way to get your name out there. So share it on Twitter, and we'll retweet it, and you'll get your name out there. Yeah. Hey, we got an email from a listener. I've already read this to Chrissy. When I got this in the inbox, I was like, oh my. Gosh. So cool. This is a really cool email. So I believe it was on the last um, podcast that we did, Chrissy, where we said, mm-hmm. hey, we want to hear from people how they found the podcast. Yeah. Right? Which uh, still, still that that's still a valid request. Send us an email at hello at com. Say, hey, Chris and Chrissy, this is how I found the podcast. Yeah. And before we read it, can I jump in and say, I know some of you are out there and you're listening and you're not telling us. No, exactly. Well, we, we've only, we got like five emails. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and it blew me away that people were like, wow, this is cool. This is how they found it. I found it through Facebook. Yeah, right? but I've even had friend. random people tell me that was a great episode, especially, our, you know, the one that came up recently. And, and I'm like, why don't you tell us more often? We, we love to hear what you like. Because a lot of times we feel like we're just talking into the abyss. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me read this email here. Really? cool it says hi chris and chrissy so your first podcast that i have ever heard was episode 216 about love utah get utah and actually it was about two or three days ago basically i was browsing youtube to get some more info about utah itself i'm fascinated by this place since early 2015 thanks to byu studio c to be honest and your video cover just got my attention i clicked I listened and I was highly impressed. I had wanted to get some more information about Salt Lake City society and how it is to live there, since I want to visit it someday. And you did expand my horizons. It was so nice to hear these stories about fundraisers and passionate people that I decided to listen to another and another and another. And to this day, I have listened to five, maybe six of your podcasts. I just love how you guys are doing great job here. Stories that you present are interesting and it can be a little bit odd to mention for native speakers, but I really appreciate your pronunciation and sound quality. It really helps me to learn some live language. So keep doing a great job and continue to introduce new cool stuff and interesting people. Greetings from Krakow, Poland. 
and I'm not sure how to pronounce Macid's Dudek or Dudek. So <laughs> I read that and then I reread it. I'm like, this guy's from Poland or girl. I, I'm not sure if it's a, it's a female or male. Uh, this person is from Poland. Fascinating. Yeah. And what, I mean, it's so great that, that I, I love the fact that we're even pronunciating well enough <laughs> for him, her, I, I, to understand uh, and, and, and learn the language. People are it. always like, oh, you know, is there enough people in Salt Lake City yeah. that, uh, are listening? I mean, we got listeners all over the world. Hey, guess what? We're interesting to other people too, guys. <laughs> hey, anyway. Hey, we would love to read your email on the show. Again, hello at IamSaltLake.com. If you have questions, if you have, uh, or how you found the show, we'd love to read that on this episode. Hey, that's going to do it for this episode. Many thanks again to our sponsors for this episode, Five Wives Vodka, which you can find at your local state liquor store, the Salt Lake Barber Company, Go book your haircut at saltlakebarberco.com and Taylor Cooperative. Schedule your fitting at taylorcooperative.com. If you're interested in sponsoring an episode or two of the podcast, please get in touch. We'd love to tell you what uh, what we're offering. Hello at iamsaltlake.com is the email. You all have a great week. Get out and enjoy the city. Support local. And good night, Grammy. <laughs>